Hello and welcome. I hope I, I can keep it to a quick look because on my first attempt, I ended up in a ranting session. <laughs> I'm not trying to do this now. Um, this is about GSX Pro for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 from FS Dream Team. Um, I had it before. I had some issues with it, not some, many issues with it. Uh, eventually, I was kind of a bit fed up and I deinstalled it again. Um, yeah, kind of putting it as a, a loss. But then again, I thought, okay, after many months um, and lots and lots of updates, so because there's one thing that you can definitely say about the FS Dream Team guys, they do uh, work on their software, which is a good thing, okay? Um, I installed it again, and uh, some of the issues that I had before, not the crashes though. At the moment, it hasn't crashed on me like it did many months ago. So that's good. Um, it, it seems to be working. I had the same issues like I couldn't remember what the freaking control something key was to get the menu because the menu is weird, uh, to, to, so to say. Um, it took me some time on the forum reading the 90 page documentation um, and trying to figure out what my problems are. Okay, but I've got it installed, I've got it running, and we're going to have a look. Now, one thing that is important, and let me quickly close this, um, if, especially if you have the prepared version of this tool, do not use the old, uh, what's it called, FS Dream Team Updater or something like that. Uh, don't do that. Use the new FSDT Universal Installer, because uh, the updates um, only come from here. They don't come from, from other tools. You see in the first line, I got 2.6.2 installed. And uh, there's a manual that comes with it. It's a 90-page manual. And I advise you, if you have a problem, and before you go on the forum, read this manual. I know, 90 pages, because otherwise you run into danger of getting slapped by um, the FS Dream Team <laughs> forum, guys. Um, I've heard so many entries in the forum where I was sitting there with my fist, not, not to me, you know, for other people, where I was sitting with my fist. Uh, it's saying, how can you treat your customers like this? Yeah, how arrogant. Um, but then again, I can see that if you get the same questions asked all the time and people obviously haven't read your manual, I can see that you, <laughs> you get a bit tired of this, yes. But then again, a 90-page English manual is okay for English natives, okay? It may be good for most Europeans that have, at least younger Europeans, have definitely good English. But if you're someone who doesn't speak English very well, who isn't technically adept that much, um, this manual, which I'm going to show you now. Um, and by the way, I'm not sure why this is called 3.0. We are on 2.62. Um, yeah, good luck. <laughs> so that, there was actually one thing where um, the guy was said, you haven't read the manual, yeah, go to your manual and read pages 79 to 80 or something like that. Um, in other words, how, how should he know that he should go to page 70 or 90 or 80, whatever the problem was, I can't remember exactly. Um, that means you need to read all these 80 and understand what's in there. So you will be sitting there for, for probably an hour. You know, it's, it's this kind of response that if I would be the one, <laughs> I would have been really, really pissed off <laughs> because they didn't tell them what to do. They pointed them to the page. This is probably not the normal, but it's just an example. And I had some issues a couple of months ago um, because things were obviously not working and there's a lot of blaming on the forum for other add-ons. Uh, according to, to them, you, you need to deinstall all your other add-ons and just run GSX. Uh, hello, you know? Anyway, 
So before you go on the forum and ask stupid questions, try and uh, ingest this manual. There is one thing that you can definitely not blame them on in, uh, that they don't document. <laughs> this is this is. It's, everything is in there, so you will find your problem, most likely, unless it is something that's uh, development uh, related and there's nothing you can do about it anyway. All right. Now let's go back to this uh, universal installer. You can check, by the way, for updates uh, and only do it here because if you use the old updater, it will not update your MSFS. At least that's my what well, was my experience. Use this here. The check will make a check if you have the, the proper version installed. Actually, in this case, it's green here, so we're fine. Yeah, 2.6.2 is latest. Um, the kind of things that, that make this software a little bit more complicated is it's not a generic tool. It, um, that means GSX comes with profiles. They call that profiles for airports and aircraft that I think out of the box are definitely covering all the Azobo standard uh, aircraft and standard scenery. And as soon as you have a payware uh, or, uh, and, and, or something like the fly-by-wire Airbus, it might be supported, it might not, out of the box. So what you will need is a profile especially if your airport isn't properly supported, if you find yourself on positions that are not uh, matching. So I had already uh, a, a problem because I recently reactivated my field air Stuttgart scenery because uh, when I got it, it was a, a, a complete mess and it didn't really work properly. Again, this has also been updated and I found out that you need to delete the Azobo standard scenery. Um, and then the Fielder Stuttgart will work. Fielder Stuttgart looks good, um, and I just wanted to give it a go. But what happened was, with GSX, it didn't work. I had some really weird effects. First of all, I had double, every position was doubled, and I wasn't even sure which one I was supposed to use. It wouldn't find any gates, because what it does, it, it does kind of a replacement. So unless you do something I'll show you in a moment, um, it will replace the gates it finds with um, the GSX kind of compatible, whatever it is, gates. The problem with the fielder scenery is they don't have standard. So they do this replacement thingy, but it doesn't work, so it's not displayed, and the, the gates are not moving. And you have all these positions, and, and so it's quite a mess. What I found out is um, if you go to this config button in GSX, this is not the configuration that you will get inside the simulator. There's another menu where you can actively make changes to the uh, particular airport, aircraft, uh, airport position, things like that. Here, um, they have these BGL files. BGL files are scenery files, okay? And one of the reasons for the double mubble with all the positions was that they ingest this Jetways BGL file for every airport that they support. And in the case where you have a specialized uh, payware or, or good freeware that is not somehow compatible with this, you will end up with either double positions, not working gates and so on. So the first thing I had to do um, is to move the EDDS Jetways BGL into the disabled column. That fixed my um, double position thing with the field there, and I suddenly had also gates that work. And the other thing is, um, I also turned off all the services because I, as far as I understand, this lower part here, this lower list, these are services that um, GSX installs as an SPB file into the simulator 
that can then be called with the normal way of doing ATC and calling ground services. But that didn't work either properly in, in feed there, so I also disabled this one. And by the way, I, by the life of me, I couldn't remember what the control key was to get the menu, which is very weirdly, very weirdly uh, implemented. Anyway, it's a matter of taste, I suppose. <laughs> I don't find it intuitive. I fi finally found the key, because I couldn't remember. I knew it was something with F12, um, but I used Shift F12, Control F12. I didn't, think, I didn't remember that it is actually Control Shift F12. Anyway, here you can configure it the way you like it. So whenever you have difficulties with your scenery, this is where you have to look. While the simulator is starting, let me show you what you need to do in order to get customized profiles. Just to explain. GSX has these profiles. These profiles are stored in the updater roaming virtuali folder. And in there you have airplanes and so if you go in here and in the airplanes in the zip files that you can download from flightsim.to for example I downloaded a, a, a newer and updated fly-by-wire A320neo, which supposedly uh, fixes problems which I have actually seen using uh, the standard profile from, uh, from GSX. We shall see if that works. I have also one for the Mad Dog, which I guess I might have to check if there's an update to this. And uh, was it here? No. There's actually a second place, which I now need to find as well, um, where you place the scenery. So there's another, um, another one which I will find for you, where you place scenery profiles. Usually in the flight sim tour entries, it, it actually tells you where, to, where you should put it. Um, it was not in roaming, I think it was in local or something. Another example of how unintuitive things are, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I, I actually got myself one for the Fielder Stuttgart, which I placed, and that actually resolved most issues. The only thing is that this profile doesn't have the, um, the jetways activated. Because obviously they couldn't get it to work, so they turned it off. So I started to now um, configure certain positions. And I think we can do this now once this is started. Yep, I found it again. Why do it in the same folder when you can do it in different ones? This one is under... Um, app data, roaming... Virtuali GSX MSFS. There you go. So it's almost at the same place, um, but you need to go airplanes and you need to go GSX MSFS, and there you go. So what you can see here is oh, I just realized I have two EDD. Why do I have two EDD? Uh -huh. Why I got two, I don't know. This was the last one. I should probably delete one of them. How did that happen? <laughs> anyway, I've got one for EDDM. And uh, I got two. This, this looks like it has been generated because I'm pretty sure that I had not two in there. I deleted this, but this is about the time last night that I started the simulator. So it looks like something has been generated. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, that's where you find it, under the Virtuali folder in roaming, GSX, MSFS for the scenery and airplanes on Virtuali level for your airplanes. 
Not sure if this is related to the field scenery, but uh, since I have it installed, at least the first time when I start the simulator, um, I get real problems here with, um, with click spots. So I'm trying to set the departure and I'm clicking and I'm clicking and I'm clicking and it takes friggin' ages. I'm not sure what this is. I also realized that my, my fans are actually working far more than, than normal. It seems to be something with Sim Update 12 and possibly uh, something that the scenery induces because I can't remember having this on the standard Adobe One. Right, so finally we are in Stuttgart and uh, what you can see here is uh, th these are now compatible gates. Um, they look a bit strange because the field of scenery normally comes actually with um, different type, like a matching sort of the color of this, but I don't care as long as we can actually get our um, gate position. Now, before you start, use the GSX menu, go to reposition aircraft and reposition at current gate because usually uh, Azobo puts you in a non-favorable position. We were far too far in front. Okay, so now we are on uh, gate, was it 11 or 12? I forgot. Um, and in order to get uh, the menu back, uh, high 11, uh, you have to use the control shift to F12 or whatever you have configured uh, as i shown you before. Now, because I have already done a lot of um, tweaking here and, and got also the new profile, now the operate jetways are actually available without me having to go into the, into the configuration menu which, by the way, if you want to customize a parking position, and this is what I hate about this thing, it's gone again. Uh, it has sort of a fixed time. If you customize this parking position, you will get a rather simple looking thing <laughs> um, with all these options. Now, that's similar to what you had in, in prepared if, if you're there. So um, if you go through the positions, interestingly, from all the gates, they have in this profile, you only have uh, 9, 9A, 1 and 11 and 12 and all the other ones don't seem to be here. So that definitely looks like something I need to w work over again and also make them. Up. And that just shows you the unintuitiveness of this tool. Yeah, it's not a generic tool. It needs a lot of tweaking. It depends on your scenery. Uh, I mean, default scenery is probably okay, but as soon as you do something slightly different, you will probably end up having to tweak. Not sure where that second profile came from. That could be the reason why um, we are not having all the positions here on the terminal, but it means for me that I need to somehow deal with it again. Anyway, let's... Um, start with uh, the catering service for example catering vehicles are on their way and that will now start to bring in um, the first stuff and the other thing is so that we can walk onto the aircraft is operate uh, jetways and it will align the jetway and open the door. Right. So the first uh, catering vehicle has arrived. Uh, unfortunately, the door doesn't open. So that's again something that probably is profile related and it just shows you this is not um, depending on what aircraft you use and so on. Is is not working 100%. And I'm actually wondering where the second uh, 
because uh, maybe the profile is different now. It only has one of them and opens the wrong door. That's almost what it looks like. The noises you hear is uh, when it when the guy brings the trolleys in and, and kind of stores them in the kitchen or something like that. I'm now requesting refueling and we wait for the refuel um, vehicle. Definitely wrong door. <laughs> it opens the back door. So that profile that I downloaded obviously is, is not useful. I hope it's uh, better with the other services. Now, it takes quite a long time for the fuel truck to come. Then you can select the fuel level that you want. Um, but to be honest, that doesn't work, at least not in the flyby wire. So um, I tried several times and it didn't do anything. You can do the custom refueling via the menu. And it could be also that you use the flyby wire uh, EFB to set your fuel level. So here it is more for show, but I guess in other aircraft, in default aircraft, it should actually load the fuel, as it says. I'm not sure how long the fuel truck will stay there. Uh, eventually it will probably um, leave. Now what I can do is request boarding. boarding. Requested. And uh, the boarding starts with um, pilots and, and cabin crew, I think. But it takes a wee moment before the question gets asked. Do you want to board crew? Uh, also comes this voice, by the way, and I say both. Pilots boarding starting. So first the pilots, then the crew, and then uh, much later, certain time, I guess you can configure that, uh, they will actually have the passengers board via the um, jetway here. Now, I hope you can see this. If you look closely, you can actually see... Well, uh, where is it? I thought I can see it. <laughs> are there, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's difficult to see, but there are actually people walking here down the jetway and are entering the plane. It's not not a bad simulation. I mean, it's it's okay. Um, I'm not sure how many crew. I guess we have two pilots and two to four um, crew members. Your Depends. crew has boarded. Passengers and boarding starting. And here you go. Now we start with the passenger boarding. You can see far more people walking down. Uh, the jetway and it makes some noise and it will take some time but what should also happen is that eventually the baggage loader should come um, well we'll see well according to this the baggage loading is in progress the thing is I'm not sure if this is a problem of the of the profile that I have now Maybe I shouldn't have uh, downloaded one, used the default. Um, or we don't seem to have baggage loaders. Well, I'll see, maybe they come. Well, baggage loading is still in progress, but no baggage loaders to be seen. Uh, I wonder now if this uh, breaks the whole procedure. This just is an example of how <sighs> difficult it is with GSX as soon as you have something out of the, the standard yeah I'm pretty sure that standard airport and standard aircraft do work reasonably well because uh, the GSX guys have done it like that but um, <clears throat> using those profiles can be a problem as we can see now because since I have installed the profile for the flyby wire um, which got good uh, remarks yeah it's not working and it's from february this year so it's not that old but apparently it doesn't seem to properly uh, work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove it again and uh, next time so now let's see i hope that we eventually get uh, to the point where we can 
um, load of passengers. Okay, I'm a little bit fed up with waiting, so I do reset position. That turns off all services and by the way, <laughs> this is what you get from the external program. For some reason it's uh, trying to use um, a folder for the simulator that doesn't exist. Um, to be honest, under program files, Windows apps, uh, I'm not sure why it's trying to do to place it there. Um, or what, what it's trying to do here, but uh, yeah, anyway, this comes every time you restart. Um, now, I did see, by the way, when you do that, you need to call up the menu again. I did see this work before, but I'm pretty sure those pro the profile that I loaded now are obviously defect. I'm not sure where the second came from, because I didn't place it there. <coughs> Could be that there's something that uh, is now conflicting. Not sure why that is. I thought that that's the way to, to put in the profile. So obviously something is mixed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, go oh. I'm going to use the prepare for pushback and departure. And uh, we're still doing German wings. So which uh, doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so you can see now the uh, doors get closed. I hope all of them. See? Yep, they're all closed. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. That's nice. Me too. There comes the lady from the ground services. Putting in the pins. Departure checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. The bypass pin is in. And the interesting thing is, um, I'm not sure if it's uh, profile related or um, if it's a, a random thing, but uh, they do seem to come with different sizes of push tracks. So I had the one that runs uh, along the, the, the wheel and kind of lifts us up. This one is the one with the normal toe. So we need to go nose right, facing east on taxi M. Release parking brake. I'm releasing the parking brake. Release parking brake. Oh. What the heck? Release parking brake. Commencing oh, for I'm in the other view. All no control is. Uh, anyway. Azobo, thank you. Um, Let's check quickly, have I done everything? We need the APU bleed and uh, yeah, I haven't done a, a setup here. We need the fuel pumps on. That and start. That's looking good. That's one of the things that work really well with GSX. Please set parking brakes. 
Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine. Start. You can disconnect. Nah, not quite. We're, we haven't really started both yet. Sounds are sometimes a little bit too loud, at least in the cockpit. You wouldn't hear it like that. But uh, yeah, it is quite immersive. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass thing removed. Left is Kia, And she, she walks away, gives us a, a wave. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next thing I will do is I will um, get myself on to an exit of the runway and then we call another functionality and that is the uh, uh, what do you call that, to follow me, um, and we're going to have a look at that functionality as well. Okay, so I stand at one of the exits uh, here on the runway in Stuttgart, and now what I can do is um, I can call the follow me um, parking, 16 suitable parkings, so let's have a look. And uh, yeah, let's go back to, well, 11 with Apis medium, so that's basically um, a jetway position a gate and uh, I click this here um, request follow me yes yeah yeah okay and now we need to wait for the follow me to come it's coming there it is uh, well it's very small but will be visible any moment yep yep there it is there it's coming Uh, hello? <laughs> there we go. All right, then uh, I can break off and I'm going to follow it now. The scenery has some strange uh, things also here on the taxi runway. There's a bit of a upwards uh, which I don't think are, whoa, which is not normal, but I've read about this. This is a problem of the feel there, scenery. I mean, at very complicated airports, uh, if you don't know where a particular parking position is and how you get there, uh, this could be quite interesting, but to be honest, it's not very realistic. So in Stuttgart, it's, I, I would think it's probably rare that uh, a follow me brings, uh, brings you in because normally all the airliners that come in there, they know where to go. And Stuttgart is not exactly a complicated aircraft uh, airport. I have to say that I basically like the field air scenery here in Stuttgart. It is a bit nicer than the default Azobo, although Azobo has done a good job after they forgot it uh, completely at the beginning. Uh, done a pretty good job on the Stuttgart scenery. 
There's also one from from Sim, in, uh, from Aerosoft, and from Justin. Um, the Justin well, was a, in my personal opinion, was a waste of money. The feel there, um, it took me now some time to, to, to actually get it working, and it's not 100%. Um, but it's okay. Um, I kind of like it. Boyo, um, this is not Le Mans. <laughs> yeah, you can see that there are some little, how do you call that? Um, little hills here on the on the taxiways. As I said, I read about this in the few days scenery. Um, but I haven't yet found a way to get rid of them. They're not bad, so it's it's okay. So here's hotel. Whoop. Yeah. And next one is India. And on India, I guess we should then turn right. Let's see. Okay, very interesting. Um, I hope you're not expecting me to do the same. I'm just going to follow you. Spawn 36 meters, I guess a 747-8 probably will have difficulties. <laughs> Fly wire gets fast very quickly, um, so from time to time you need to use the brake. Whoa, that was too much. Yeah, the, the, the little wheel moves extremely slowly. What is he doing there? A little dance or what? Oops, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. So we need to get... Uh, so you can see the... 6... 0.5... far. Oh, well, tough luck. Deal with it. <laughs> it is a bit difficult. Uh, also because the steering here in the flyby-wire, I'm not used to it. Okay, anyway, we're there. So let's uh, turn off the engines. Yeah, it's APU still on. I, I never flew, so 
Now let's see what happens. I guess I need to turn off the beacon. And operate the jetway. The boarding requested. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, and now your passengers will leave the aircraft. Probably glad that they <laughs> can go back into the building. Um, interestingly now, the cargo come this time, so there is quite obviously... The boarding side. There's probably an issue with the... I think this one is too big. Well, anyway. I guess I'm going to delete this uh, fly-by-wire profile again and leave it with the default. The default only had one little snack, and that was uh, that this door wouldn't open. Do you want to deboard? No. No. We stay on. Yeah, that's it. I hope that was helpful. Just give you an impression. So, it works. It's uh, fine. Most of the time. Um, the profiles are a little bit difficult, so I need to optimize. Uh, I hope I don't have to do this with every payware airport um, and every non-standard airplane, because that is uh, something you, you don't really want to have to do all the time. You, know? you want to just get on with it and, uh, well, we shall see. Anyway. Um, Let's unload stuff here and until next time.